Come on, lift your hands, everybody all over the house. Go ahead and mute everything but me if you need to. So we can get this right. We will not be distracted in the house of God. We will not allow the enemy to, to move us mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. So while they're working all of those out, things out, remember we haven't been in church in two years. It takes a little bit of time to get all the kinks out. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. You can, don't, don't judge. It takes a little bit of time to get all the kinks out. But while they're working it out, I believe there's somebody else working it out. While they're fixing everything, how many believe that they serve a God who can also fix? So can we lift our hands and even under your mask, could you open your mouth and begin to honor the great and mighty works of our God? Everybody, everybody. We love you, Jesus. I said we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good to us and God is so kind. Would you help me honor Co-Pastor White, everybody? Whatever you don't celebrate exits your life. I also honor my mom. We thank God for you. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, baby. Bless your heart. Amen. Keep standing. Keep standing. I feel the spirit of prayer in the room. And I believe God's going to move, but I got to get this word into your spirit before we pray there's some specific things we need to pray we're praying for children but there are some specific people holy spirit has dropped in my my lap to pray for and i believe god's going to do something major uh here it is ladies and gentlemen i, I believe in this word that holy spirit gave to me for this morning but i'm going to need you to uh take notes so do you have your phone uh, or something to write with go ahead and pick that up now while you're standing while you're standing uh, I'm going to need you to take some notes down. Uh, I won't be long, but I will uh, allow the passages to pause and breathe so that you can absorb what Holy Spirit is saying. Uh, sometimes I admit it as a former teacher, I can talk fast uh, because when you're an educator, you got to keep everybody's attention. Uh, and sometimes that comes into my messages, and I don't want to talk fast today. Uh, forgive me if I do, but there is something I believe Holy Spirit is going to use to bless you and the children that's in the room. Somebody say amen to that. Okay, okay, keep standing, keep standing. Uh, and I want you to take note of this, Luke 4, 18, and Ecclesiastes 9. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to read this together. Everyone watching me, uh, I need you to grab very quickly Luke 4 Luke 4 look at verse 18 I feel the spirit of prayer in the room and I believe God has come to answer prayer anybody else believe that oh uh, I believe Pastor Gerald the Lord has come to answer prayer I believe that's why you all were fighting this morning because there's a breakthrough in this room that the enemy desires to distract us from receiving please take note the enemy can see angelic activity. How many of y'all understand that? Oh, I got a lot of teaching to do. Not enough people raise their hand. I got a lot of teaching to do. The enemy sees when God is releasing blessings to your life. Woo! Amen. Okay, okay. Uh, I want us to read this together. Y'all, Can y'all see it in the room? Uh, if you're watching, I hope you can see it. If not, I need you to get it on your own. Luke 4, we're going to read. 18 and then we'll jump to 19 ready read the spirit of the lord this is about to bless you ecclesiastes 9 and verse 11, this is, this is going to bless you today. All right, Ecclesiastes 9, uh, 11, I need y'all to see it. Ready, read. We saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Yes, God. Yep.
If you're not too mean, look at your neighbor. I know you can't touch them, but look at them eyeball to eyeball. And tell them this, unfold the instructions. Unfold the instructions. Be seated in the Lord's house. The process of building an item to sell for public use, you build it, you break it down, you write the instructions, you build it again with the instructions to make sure it aligns itself, then you break it down again, you box it, then you send it. I know it feels as if God gave you a broken life. I know it feels like everything in your life is broke. Money, broke. Relationships, broken. Parenting, broken. Body, broken. Future, broken. Living arrangements, broken. Transportation, broken. Prayer requests, broken. It, it feels like God gave us believers a broken life. But the truth is, in eternity future, God has already assembled your life. Then he broke it down, wrote the instructions, and trusted you with life and instructions. Here's my point. Everything you need is in you, but some assembly is required what you need to make it, what you need to be successful, what you need to generate peace, what you need to generate life and joy. It's all there with instructions. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, escorts us through the isolation trial of Jesus. The moments when he was in the wilderness in isolation by himself under the enemy's attack. Here's what we have to fight when we are isolated from the assembly. Here's what we have to fight when we are isolated from the assembly. Appetites without accountability. Write that down, write that down, write that down, write that down. Uh, uh, we, we pray that we can continue in this wise, but there's always a possibility that we go back into some level of a decreased number if, 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 it, if COVID begins to continue to ravage the, uh, the, the, the land and, and we have to decrease the attendance. And I don't know if we'll all be able to meet for long. I, I, I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's happening. But, but what I want to make sure is that if anything were to happen to you where you are in isolation, I need you to watch to make sure you don't have appetites without accountability. Did you write that down? Appetites without accountability. Here's the next thing that, that isolation from the assembly brings, success without sacrifice. Yeah, yeah we want to be, be successful, uh, but we don't want to sacrifice anything. Here's the third thing. I'm going to go back over all of them, everybody. Proof without process. Teach, Pastor Show, when we're isolated from the assembly of God's people, we can become fragmented, frail, fragile. Our minds may start to wonder and worry and weakness. Like Jesus, we have to overcome. Like Jesus, we have to walk through and overcome appetites yes, without accountability. Which, which is the, the phrase, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, which is the lust of the flesh. Whenever there's isolation in your life, you got to deal with appetites without accountability. That's the bread alone, and that is the lust of the flesh. Whenever you are isolated from the body of Christ, you have to deal with the lust of your flesh. Your flesh starts acting up, and there is no way for you to be accountable to anybody because we don't know where you are. You're by yourself. You're somewhere else. We don't know what you're looking at on your phone. We don't know what you're Googling on your computer. We, we don't know what you're spending your money on, but the flesh, come on somebody in here, begins to rise. And we have to deal with the fact that there is no accountability. Without accountability, my appetites go unchecked. The, the question becomes, what do you really like? 
Ooh. Brandon, what do you like when nobody's looking? What do you like when nobody can tell what's really going on? What do you like when you are in isolation? Okay, okay, okay. Elder, Elder Collins, let's switch gears for just a second. Um, uh, is it possible that Jesus doesn't satisfy you? I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Is it possible that Jesus does not satisfy your appetite? If that is the case, you have to change your satisfaction requirements. I feel like teaching in this room. You, oh my shy, I feel the glory of God. You got to change what satisfies you on the inside. Otherwise, your appetites are going to be out of control. So I mean, otherwise, if you don't change what satisfies you, your appetites are going to be out of control and nobody will be able to tame you. No, 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 no. I, I see. I know. See what you're doing. What you're doing is you're trying to pacify rather than get delivered. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't want you to pacify. I want you to be delivered because because what you do is you ruin somebody else's life and you just go marry them thinking marriage is a fire extinguisher. But because you've had so many people in the bed with you, one person will never satisfy you until you get delivered. I feel God in this place. I'm talking to, oh, bye, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm coming for you today. I wanted to preach this so bad last week, Pastor Gerald. I wanted to preach this so bad. I've been wanting to preach all week. I've been preaching to anybody who would talk to me. Somebody call, ask for directions. I'm saying, let me tell you what the Lord said. I've just been, I've been wanting to preach all week. I've been wanting to preach all week. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Appetites without accountability. Elder James, here's the next one. Success without sacrifice. The devil said, watch this, I'll give you the kingdoms. Whoa, whoa, Joe, why would he say that? Because Jesus came to collect kingdoms. <laughs> That's why Revelation said the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our, of our Lord and his Christ. He came to collect kingdoms. So he says, I'll give you kingdoms, no need to sacrifice. <laughs> Which is the lust of the eye. Sometimes if we gain a little title without walking through the process, we might not be able to stand strong in the future. Every level of success requires an equal level of sacrifice. Depending on how successful you want to be, that lets you know the level of sacrifice you need to be ready to give. Your success level has to match your sacrifice level. You might want it because you see it, but do you have the pain tolerance? Because success demands a pain tolerance. I, I'm talking to somebody. Maybe, maybe it's virtually. I, I don't know. I don't know. Come here. Sit up in your seat. I'm coming for you today. Uh, there, you may be gifted higher than your tolerance for pain. You may be gifted higher than your tolerance for betrayal. You may be gifted and talented higher than your character can sustain you. And so then you say, God, why aren't you using me like this? And it is of his mercies that you are not consumed. He merciful keeps you small enough, long enough to make sure when he elevates you, you have the character to remain there. <laughs> Woo! Okay, okay. All right, let me slow down just a little bit because I'm, I'm getting happy. Then proof... Without process. He says, throw yourself down. The angels will come and get you. You know you're not going to fall and hurt yourself. That is your pride. Be careful when people can produce a show and they have no substance. Be, be careful when they can 
get on stage, get in front of you, get on the phone, get on Facebook, and produce a show, yet they have no integrity, yet they have no character. And, and you end up, okay, so this, I hope this doesn't sound judgy. I, I hope this doesn't sound judgy uh, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we do believe in forgiveness and we do believe in multiple chances and we do believe that all of us have issues. So there is no way I want you to feel as if I am judging. But I do believe, Pastor Gerald, I do believe, praise team, that there are some things you ought to have worked out before you get up here. I, 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 I'm not saying any of us are perfect. I am working with co-pastor. Working with her. <laughs> we all have something God's working on us about. But I just believe that before you come up here, there are some things, uh, Paul said like this, I, I've heard some things that should not be numbered amongst the saints. Here it is, no integrity. They, they have proof because they're gifted. They have proof because they have the gift of gab. They have proof because they can work a crowd. They have proof because they know how to manipulate media. But their process is shallow. Real proof is the actions generated by the thought life that creates fruit of the spirit. Let me say that again. Real proof, somebody say real proof, is actions generated by thought life that creates the fruit of the spirit. He tells us, Philippians 4 and 8, put that up for me. Think on these things. Okay, let's go through it. Let's go through it. Put that up for me. Please tell me you have it. Philippians 4 and 8. Let's read it from uh, the King James. I know, I know we don't like the King James all the time. Uh, if you got it, please get it. It says, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Somebody say just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there, if there, if there, if there be any virtue. If there be any praise, think on these things. Okay, okay, here's, here's a different version. It says this, for, uh, Philippians 4 and 8. I hope you can hear me. I hope you can walk with me through this. Stay with me, everybody watching virtually. It says, um, uh, today's Passion Translation says, So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, Beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten, oh, this is good, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. What is that text saying to have life right now? It says, keep your mind here. Keep your mind here. Here, stay here. Where? Thinking on these things. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Help me, Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, uh, the devil, his master plan is not about your house. Watch this. His master plan is not about your car. His master, his, I'm talking about his master plan why he's coming against you, Deanna, it is not about your career. His master plan is to move your mind. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. I feel, okay, so, 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 uh, uh, the Word of God says in Acts 20 and 24, 23, 20, 22, 23, 24, right in there, it says, it was talking about the spirit of the enemy coming against him. And, and the man of God said, and none of these things move me. Yeah. Woo! Over the top. Not, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Are y'all saved? I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Chase, Deacon Chase, none of these things will move my mind off of him. He only attacks what moves your mind. 
This is good stuff. This is good stuff. He only attacks you in the areas that hurt in the inward part. So, so if he can move you through attacking your house or your career or, or whatever the case may be, he, he looks and he tries different things to see what moves you. He tries this and he tries that and he steps back and there is no reaction. You have a kingdom reaction. Then he tries this and he tries that and he steps back and he finds that there's no kingdom. Uh, there's no reaction to him. Watch this. Jesus says that the prince of this world cometh, but he finds nothing in me. What are you saying, pastor? It says the enemy is coming to attack you. And when he comes to attack you, he looks for what he put in you. He looks to see if the seed he put in you when you were 12 has manifested into fruit. But the man of God said, none of these things should move me. <laughs> the prince of this world coming. Jesus says that, the prince of this world coming. But he has nothing in me that belongs to him. Ooh. See, when you were 12, the enemy tries to put a seed of bitterness, a, a seed of rejection, a seed of pain, a seed of abandonment, a seed of molestation or rape, a seed of lack, wh whatever it might be. And then 10 years later, when you finally meet the one you're supposed to marry, the enemy comes back to say, now how can I destroy? Deacon Greg, are you with me, man? He comes back, he says, now how can I destroy this? And he searches within you and he pokes at you to figure out what moves you. Ah, I hope y'all are catching this because this will bless you if you let it. This, this, this is good. Okay, 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 okay. God, somebody say teach, Pastor. Teach. God is unboxing the people of God to assemble us and put us on display. But whenever you get something that needs to be assembled, you have to unfold those directions to see what God put in the box. God put, okay, all right, all right. I need y'all to stay with me from here on out. Somebody says, I'm gonna stay with you, pastor. And I need you to write down everything I tell you to write down because God's getting ready to shift your mind. God put a five-fold anointing on everybody he saves. Luke 4 and 17 that Jesus op says Jesus opened the book, right? For our intents and purposes, Jesus opened the box and found five things he uses to assemble us. We just read it, Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. The five fold blessing that God uses to assemble you and point you towards purpose. Say, I receive it. But don't forget the fivefold gift that God gives to the body of Christ in Ephesians 4 and 11. In Ephesians 4 and 11, there are gifts. There are five gifts that are given to the body of Christ. Five gifts that are given to the bride. We are the, are y'all still with me? I got to slow right here. I need you to stay with me. We are, we are the bride of Christ. And as a gift to the bride, God released for, uh, for the purposes of making sure that there is protection and there is guidance, there is care, there is covering. So he released to as a gift apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers as gifts. The fivefold anointing released to the bride as protection. So, so if you really want to look at it, I don't... Huh. Scholarly and systematically... Uh, let, me, let, me, let me throw a homiletic stone at this. I'm not going to stay here for, for a long time. So, so in systematic theology, and you look at end time theology for the bride of Christ, these are the groomsmen. 
that's called to protect the bride until the groom enters. So, so the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and that's why, that's why it's so bad. That's why God hates it when any of these abuse his bride. Because they are called to be the protectors of the bride. The, these, are, these are the groom's best friends. Let me just throw a homiletic stone and I'm going to move on. Just, El Scrooge, stay with me. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, those are fivefold, the fivefold anointing. Now, now to, to Joe, let, me just, let me just hit this real fast and I'll move on. The, the, if, if there is, uh, as far as uh, Christological thinking is concerned, um, and eschatology, the end times, as far as, as far as the groomsmen are concerned, if you have groomsmen, you also have to have bridesmaids for the marriage to be sealed and settled. And so the bridesmaids, if you ever want to find out, I'll, I'll give them to you real fast. The bridesmaids are located in Isaiah 11 and 2. The bridesmaids are the spirit of the Lord. He says, he says and I give to you the spirit of the Lord. Watch this. This is so good. I, I need to make sure you understand what Holy Spirit is saying. It's the spirit of the Lord. He says, I give you that. I give you wisdom. I give you understanding. I give you counsel. I give you strength. I give you knowledge. And I give you fear and respect. You say, well, Pastor Show, why are there only five groomsmen, but yet seven bridesmaids? Because in a wedding ceremony, you always have two extra for the women. You have to have the matron of honor and the maid of honor. And so for the maid of honor and the matron of honor, it is literally the spirit of the Lord and wisdom. Wisdom, Greek, Sophia, female. You are literally protected on every side. Oh, The spirit of the Lord, wisdom, the fear of God, counsel, understanding. They walk with you and they prepare you to come out to receive Jesus. They are who preps you. So you got one putting on makeup. And you got one helping you get dressed. And you got another one giving you a... Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. That's, that's, that's a different subject. So when you... Y'all all right? Sorry, sometimes I go on these tangents. Forgive me. Okay, all right, all right. So that's the fivefold gift to the body. Say, I receive it. But here's what I came to preach. Oh, that was my intro. That's what I came to preach right here. You cannot correct bad teaching with no teaching. You, you, are y'all watching me? You can only correct bad teaching with right teaching. And so there's a scripture that we have taught wrong and misunderstood our whole lives. I'm going to free you from it, and I'm going to pray for people, and we're going home. Ecclesiastes 4, Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says this. Look at what I underlined for you. Those underlines are mine. I returned and saw under the sun. Now, we're talking about the five-fold blessing that God put inside of you, right? I've given you two five-folds in the scripture so far, right? Watch this. Watch for this one. Watch for this one. I saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the neither yet bread to the come on, keep it going, keep it going, nor yet riches to the men of Yet favor to the men of skill, because time and chance happens to them all. So here's how this has been misrepresented, and I'm going to free you. We've looked at this scripture, and we have been given a license for weakness. And what we've done, if we, we have made excuses when we were not swift enough. And we were not strong enough. And we lacked wisdom. And we didn't have understanding. And we had less skill than needed. And when we felt that level of rejection, we would hide behind this text and say, I'm not worried about it because the race isn't given to. 
So it has given you a license to be weak. It's given you a license to quit. But that is not what this text means. The text means with the Holy Ghost. Because time and chance happens to us all. He's saying when time and chance comes, here's what I want to deposit into you. Because the race is not just going to be given to one of these. I want to give you all of these. What does the Holy Spirit want to give you? He wants to give you swiftness. He says, I want to give you strength. I want to make you wise. I want to give you understanding. I want to make you skillful. You are not weak. Say, I receive it. The text does not mean you are less than everybody else. It's telling you what you have access to. It says, I'm swift. It says, I'm, I'm strong. It says, I'm, I'm wise. It says, I have understanding. It says, I have skill. Look, look, look at the list of what God says he has already deposited in you. He's just waiting for you to let the Holy Spirit have access to your life. When the Holy Spirit has access to you, he releases a swiftness about you. Nobody's mind is faster than yours. Nobody gets new ideas faster than you. You are swift. You are witty. You are intelligent. Stop hiding behind the scripture that says his, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's true, but that's not every day. Your calling is to be strong. Strong in heart, strong in mind. The gift of wisdom is yours. It's already in you. Say, I receive that. You have understanding and you are skilled. I need you to hear the revelation because this is going to bless you if you let Holy Spirit unbox you fully. Somebody say, unbox me, Holy Spirit. No, say it like you mean it. Come here, everybody watch and say, unbox me, Holy Spirit. He wants to activate these five-fold gifts in your life. And these five-fold gifts match Jesus' manifesto in Luke 4, 18. He gives you five there. The five there is the gospel. It is a release. It is sight. It is freedom. It is favor. All right, all right, because you're looking at me like you're not following me. So when we match them up, do I have that? If I had that, give that to me. So, so when we, okay, do I have one where I match them up? Maybe not. Okay, let me, let me give them to you. Here's, here's, what I want you to, here's what I want you to have. There it is. Here's what I want you to have. There is a swift gospel that you have access to. What, what do you mean? You have the ability to proclaim the word of God and it moves quickly in your life. Here's what he wants in your life. A swift gospel where the power of God is released as you speak the word of God. It is activated wherever you send it. Say, I received that. Then there is a strong release. Wherever you were held captive, God sends strength to break you free. So all captivity has to be uh, given up, uh, come off of you. The hand of the wicked one has to be released off of you because God releases you with strength. Are y'all getting anything out of this? I'm just trying to teach you something that's going to change your prayer life forever because this is how you're supposed to pray. Watch this. He releases wisdom and sight. Wisdom and sight. You don't have to cry over decision making. Because you have wisdom, you have sight, then he gives you an understanding of freedom. Okay, all right, this is critical. And I'm done after this, for real. I got like two minutes left. It's critical for you to understand that, that, that 
that you can be free but lack understanding. So the prison doors can swing open, but you lack the understanding to walk through them. Not only do you lack the understanding to walk through them, you also lack the understanding to maintain your freedom. So he says, not only do I want to free you, but I want you to understand your freedom. And then the man of God comes back and says, do not use your freedom or God's mercy and God's grace as an occasion to sin. So some of us, watch this, I love you with my whole heart, don't be mad at me. Some of us are better Christians bound. Some of us, we live a more sanctified life in trouble. And we are not mature enough to handle freedom. We are, we are not mature enough to be free. We, we, we need chains. We need a chain that gives us but so much rope, so much length that yanks us back because freedom means an opportunity to sin. So he wants you to understand freedom. Then he gives you skills and then puts favor on your skill. So, so we've read these scriptures not recognizing how Holy Spirit wants to deposit them all inside of us. And locked up in you is a new identity that I want you to begin to pray about. I want you to begin to pray about the gospel of Jesus Christ running swiftly out of your mouth. I want you to begin to pray about every area of your life where there is bondage, that there is a strong release. I want you to literally pray that God gives you wisdom and gives you sight. I want you to pray that God helps you understand the level of freedom that he's given you. And I want you to pray that God unfolds the skill and the favor he has destined for you your life if you only knew how good that was if you only knew how that will change your life if you only understood the magnitude of knowing why Jesus came and why he came to unlock something great in you when he says greater is in you than he that's in the world, what was he talking about? Wisdom, strength, understanding, freedom, the gospel to be released. All right, all right. I'm gonna try it one more time and I'm not gonna beg you to get it. What I'm saying is whatever, okay, watch this. Everybody watching, I love you. What I'm saying is whatever had you captive has to release you. Listen, he, has, he doesn't have to do it until you say it. He knows he has to let it go, but he knows you don't know he has to let it go. I, 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 okay, all right, all right. Let me, let, me, let me give it to you one more time. The devil knows that he has to let you go. But until you know he has to let you go, he does not let you go. So, so it, is, it is a release of your family. He has to take his hands, once you realize this word, off of your family, off of your mind, off of your marriage, off of your money, off of your health, off of your housing, off of your transportation, off of your children, off of your career, off your joy, off your peace, off your sleep, off your body, off your sight, off your vision. Take off of you. No more depression. No more rejection. No more isolation. No more loneliness. All of that, his hand has to come off of you, but he won't do it if you don't say it. Somebody shout, hands off! Say it like you mean it, hands off! You have to be released from fear, release you from depression, release you from fatigue. Come on, come on. Release you from sadness. Release you from loneliness. Release you from pain. Release you from desperation. Release you from ignorance. He's got to give you your sight back. No more blind spots. No more areas of ignorance. The Lord turned the light on. The Lord restored your vision. 
Oppression has to be lifted. Oppression has to be lifted. Rejection has to be lifted. Anger has to be lifted. Everything, everything, everything. Everything, everything, everything. That is not like God. It has to be lifted. It has to be lifted. You have to be released. You have to be let go. You have to be free. You have to be whole. You have to be healed. You have to be delivered. Why don't you give God a praise in here? Give God a praise in here. Come on, give God a praise wherever you're watching from. Give God some glory. Give God some honor. He's worthy to be lifted. He's worthy to pray praise. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. Oh my God. Can I give you the last one? Steals and favor. Favor over your money. Favor over your marriage. Favor over your children. Favor over your parenting. Favor over your career. Favor over your mind. Favor over your body. Favor over your heart. Favor. 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 Here it is. Last one. And the Lord touch your skill. And the Lord make you better than everybody else. And the Lord make you sought after. And the Lord increase your business. And the Lord increase your wealth. He will, oh, he will give you skillful hands. The Lord will give you favor. The Lord give you skill. The Lord give you freedom. The Lord release you. your hands and begin to honor God for his goodness I need you to lift your hands wherever you are wherever you are wherever you are whether you're in Tennessee or Detroit whether you're in Florida I need you to lift your hands right now with us in the sanctuary we thank God for you everybody watching in the DMV we thank God for you come on lift your hands right where you are yes God Anthony, I had to give this revelation today. And the reason I had to give this revelation today, Minister Derek, is because Holy Spirit hit my soul and said, if they don't know it, they'll never get it. So God put inside of you, watch this, a swiftness, strength, wisdom, understanding, and skill. How many of you ever felt like, God, why is everything moving slow instead of swift? 
Lord, hey, anybody ever felt like that? Why is it moving slow instead of it's supposed to be going? Have you ever said it's supposed to be going faster than this? Have you ever said, God, where's your strength? Because I feel weak in this area. Have you ever said, God, I need the wisdom. I don't understand. Is my skill enough? God says, yes. But to unlock it, you got to pair it. Where two or three, even in his word, the two concepts meet together and provide you with the unlocking, with the unboxing. Here is the assembly that's required. I said, God, your people are crying out to you for change, for you to make a way, for you to open a door. He said, are they asking me for a release? I said, yeah, God. He said, are they asking me for sight? I said, yes, God. He said, are they asking me for freedom? I said, yeah, God. He said, are they asking me for favor? I said, yes, God. He said, well, that's where I came. That's what I'm here to do, to pair my super with your natural. And that's how you get supernatural manifestation in your life. But that's why I had to first convince you, watch this, that you are not weak. Oh God, okay. See, I receive it. The reason why I wanted you to write that down is because I need you to add that to your daily prayer. And sometimes many of us, don't be shy, you get on your face and you don't know what to pray. You have a problem, but what you need is a prayer package for your problem. So what you do is you speak all five, ten of these over every area of prayer. If it's pain, you speak this over the pain. That God's word, the good news, what's the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. The word of God. The, you, you put the word of God in swift action to manifest. You, you, you command, whatever, whatever it is, you command a strong release. Not a weak release, not a slow release, a swift and strong. Are y'all getting any of this? A strong release. Then you say, about this specific area, the same area, Jonay, you say, God, give me wisdom. Right? Give me sight about it. Lord, I don't completely understand, so free my understanding. Then give me the skill and favor to defeat it. You pray this over everything. Somebody say, I'm going to pray it, Pastor. The end of that scripture says, time and chance happens to them all. Because your time will come and your chance will occur. But when your time comes and your chance comes, will you be prepared with the deposit activated to be successful in the kingdom. I have to pray. Kopi, can I do this now? Can I pray? I feel, don't, I don't want to lose you because I'm getting ready to pray for all your children in just a second. So if you're watching online, I want you to get your children somewhere near you. Uh, I, I got to pray. Um, uh, Brittany and Mike, let me pray for you right now. Let me pray for you right now. We get ready to pray for our children. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I'm not finished. I'm not finished with you. Don't go. We have to pray for all of our children. I still feel the spirit of prayer. Come stand right here. Stand right here. I'm I'm believing God for a miracle, everybody. I am believing God for a miracle. Believe in God 
God for a miracle. So look at me. Last Sunday, Holy Spirit dropped y'all in my spirit to pray. So we get ready to pray. And I'm believing God for your baby's health. I'm asking God to reverse everything the doctor said. But before I pray for you, let me say this. I come against the work of the enemy where you begin to blame yourself. Am I right? Holy Spirit said you've been blaming yourself, saying it's my fault. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. It's just an attack of the enemy. But I'm believing God that at this very hour, he's going to heal your baby. He's going to touch your womb. He's going to restore the amniotic fluid and seal it. Is that what I'm praying for? So everybody knows this is what I'm praying for and this is what we're about to believe God for. That God would replace the amniotic fluid and hold up by C. And ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And see. Hold up by C. And seal it. I need every mother to point your hands this way. Because nobody understands like a mama. All right. Can I have some more? Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I need everybody to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Woo! I rebuke the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I come against stillborn and miscarriages in the name of Jesus. I cancel you and I send you away. I command the amniotic fluid to build now. Build now. Build now. Build now. Build now. Somebody say build now. We command a restoration of the amniotic fluid in the name of Jesus. And we command that it be sealed tight in the name of Jesus. We command a full term pregnancy with a healthy child without any damage, without any issues in the name of Jesus. Hold up. I'm getting ready to pray for the kids. Is, is there anybody else that's pregnant? Can you wave at me? If you're pregnant. Amen. Can y'all just come real fast? Can you just come up here real fast? I'm sorry if I... If I'm putting you on the spot, my bad. 
<laughs> I'm sorry if I'm putting you on the spot. But I, I want to pray for you. Come around this side, Deacon Greg. Come on this side. I just want to anoint you. So, I'm getting ready to pray for these kids, these children. Kopi, I'm getting ready to pray for these children. As a prophetic sign, I want you to see your baby up here with me getting prayed for. Right? In five years when they go to school. Oh, Pastor, I want you to know each and every one of them. In the name of Jesus, I come against all issues in the birthing process. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. No issues. Come a little closer. Come a little closer. In the name of Jesus, I'm talking to my elders. I'm talking to my elders. Amen. Come on. I come against all birth defects and any issues with the birthing process. And I speak wholeness now in Jesus' name. Full term pregnancy in Jesus' name. Full term in Jesus' name. We are not worried. We speak the word of faith. That it's filled now. That it's filled now and sealed now. If y'all believe God can do anything, clap your hands. I want to pray for all the children. They're going back to school. Can you come? All that, if your parents will allow you. If you're watching, I want you to get your child ready. This won't take me too long. We want to anoint them and believe God for them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bring them fast. Bring them fast. Bring them fast. At home, prepare yourselves. I want to pray for your children. Come around the other side. Come around the other side. Come around. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe the blood's going to cover them. Yes, God. Stay engaged. Come on. Come on. Would you clap your hands for the children that are coming? Elder Scruce, would you come get some oil? Elder Scruce, come get this oil. Get this oil and, and, and anoint all the elders' hands. Elder, Elder Scruce, get the oil from him and anoint all the elders' hands. In all the deacons' hands, all the ministers, come, come. We're getting ready to appropriate the blood of Jesus. We're getting ready to appropriate the blood of Jesus. I believe in blessing the children. Everybody make sure you have your masks on. All right, anoint every child. Parents, I hope this is okay. Anoint every child. Anoint every child. Yep, yeah, on the deacons and ministers. Deacons and ministers, get, it on, get them all on your hand. Get them all on your hand. Anoint every child. Anoint every child. Father, in the name of Jesus, every teacher, every teacher also, every, every daycare provider, young people, lift your hands. I'm praying for you, but I need you to talk to God too. Lift your hands. We're believing God to cover you. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak. Come on, point your hands this way. We speak a blood covering. We speak a blood covering over our children now. In the name of Jesus, we specifically bind the spirit of the flu, the spirit of COVID, the spirit of every variation, the spirit of every deviation, we come against it in the name of Jesus and we speak a protective covering the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cover our children from sickness and disease from every illness that the enemy wants to bring we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that our children be safe 
from newborns up through college every teacher we speak safety I come against school shootings violence bus accidents kidnapping come against it now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare safety now I need everybody in the room to begin to speak the word of life and covering over our children in the name of the Lord I decree and declare it I speak to their self-esteem and I command that it rise come against the work of the enemy lurking in social media to distract them in the name of Jesus come against the work of the enemy lurking in social media to cause their esteem to die speak confidence come against every learning disability every learning challenge and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that they be delivered from it now in the name of the Lord And we thank you father and we thank you for it now this covering this blood covering over them now we pray for every daycare that they go to every classroom that they're in every school that they're in every teacher wave at me every teacher wave at me every administrator wave at me I speak a covering over your life now in the name of Jesus that nobody would able to be able to bring anything to your classroom or anywhere near you that would infect you that would bother you I come against it now in the name of the Lord Jesus against violence in your classroom or wherever you are every teacher every administrator in the name of Jesus anyone that works in the school system we cover you now the blood cover Lord you said in your word to the children of Israel in Exodus that every demonic entity would have to pass over cannot infect or impact we pray in Jesus name for Ali Rachel Yasmin Tanaya Tashawn Asher Bryce Champ Cash and Dale we speak a covering over Cameron and Anaya. We speak a covering over Josh, Isaiah, Micah, Tim Jr., Tatiana, AJ Collins, Aaron Williams, Bailey, Brandy, Josh. We speak over Andrew. We speak over Elena in the name of Jesus. We speak over Jocelyn and Trey, Alyssa, Josiah. We speak over Tylan, Tyler, Michaela. Arian, Madison, Tyron, Peyton, Andy, Chrislin, Seth, Ann, and Obadiah in the name of Jesus. We command every name that I just named that's watching virtually. We command the same blood covering over you in the name of Jesus. Over Jocelyn, over Trey, Alyssa, Tyler, Peyton, Adrian, Christina, Cameron, Anaya, Tim, Makai, AJ, Aaron, Bailey, Andrew, Anaya, we speak over Ali now. The blood cover in the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands, everybody. As they go back to their seats, come on, clap your hands. them that do rejoice. We believe God for a covering. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One last time, clap your hands because God is good. And his mercies endure to all generations. Be seated in the house of God. We're getting ready to go. But I want to invite everyone. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't turn me off. I want to invite you to sow a seed. I want to invite everyone to sow a seed. Here's what I want you to do. Everybody. Everybody. Somebody say everybody. I didn't hear you. Say everybody. I want everybody. Listen to me specifically. Come way down. Come way down. I want everyone that can. So a $50 seed, 
right now. This five-fold impartation deserves a specific seed. And when you decide to obey this voice, I want you to stand with me and I want you to do it fast. This five-fold miracle must be released. Online, I need you to type in the text, in the chat, let me know you're standing with that gift. I'm standing with that gift. Co-pastor, get hours ready. This five-fold release needs, requires a seed to be attached to it. Everyone watching, I need you to put it in the chat so I can see it. I need it now. I can see everybody that's chat. Thank you, Lana. You're getting ready to take your son to college. We speak over him now, uh, uh, over Lana's son now, in the name of Jesus. And that travel to college, Grace and Elijah in Jesus' name. Eden, Carrington, Brooke, we declare it now over Brooke's life. Thank you. Cameron, Jaquetta, yes. Aaliyah, we speak it. I'm still getting it. I'm still getting it. Keep putting it in the chat. I'm still praying for you. I need everybody, everybody, stand with me. This word requires a seed response. And I'm going to push you. We have to unlock this truth. And you have to unlock this truth. I need you to do it now. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you for letting me know you're with me. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Alyssa. Tassan, thank you for letting me know you're with me. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Seth. People online are letting me know, Pastor, I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm waiting for a few more of you. This, don't miss this unlocking. Don't miss this move. We are declaring the word of God. Did you receive that word today? Did you see how this is going to change how you pray and decree and declare every area of your life? Hear me clearly. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for letting me know you're with me. There's a few more people in this room. I need you to stand with that gift. We speak life over Ashton and Gabrielle, Ethan and Trey. In the name of Jesus. They're still sending me kids. Amen. <laughs> Layla, London, Leah, we speak protection over you. Michael, Matthew, we speak protection over you. Logan, Cameron, Addison, Ava, Travis, Ethan, Sheena. Come on, keep sending them to me. We speak protection over you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A few more moments. I need you to honor God with this. This requires seed if you can't do that do the best you can and stand if you can't do that do the best you can and stand try to put a five in that number somewhere honor God though honor God honor God this is a revelatory release you are swift say I receive it Say it like you mean it. I receive it. I'm swift. I am strong. I do have understanding. I do have sight. Favor is on me. I am skilled. Those of you who are tithing, thank you. Come on, don't forget to honor God in your tithe. We believe in returning the tithe to God. We owe him that. You do that. That's separate from this seed. Your tithe is separate from this seed. Lift your phone up, however you're giving. If you want to give by envelope, the information or the envelope is right in the seat in front of you. You can do that. And then on your way out, I think on the way out, they can put that envelope in the bucket. Amen. If you're online, the information is available for you to sow online right now. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. You can go on the app. I hope you've downloaded our app. On the app, there's a giving tab. You can go right to the app. You can go right to the giving tab. For those of you who, if I started talking too fast when I was preaching, this message will be up on the app tomorrow. Get this message, watch it again, listen, take notes, add it to your prayer time. I'm not worried about numbering the people anymore. I want to weigh you. I don't want every wind to knock you over. I want you to have spiritual girth. 
Say, I receive it. Come on, lift that up now. Father, in Jesus' name. Begin to speak over your seat now. Go, go. Speak over your seat. Come on, speak over your seat. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus the five-fold anointing rest on this seed. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit the five-fold anointing rest on this gift. I speak it over your life now. You are swift. You are strong. You have understanding. The favor of God is on you. The glory of God is on you. Understanding. Freedom. You are released in the name of Jesus. Every area of your life that is under demonic influence and attack, his hand must be let go. His hand must come off of you. In the name of Jesus, we come against the work of the enemy and we declare that we are not weak. Sow that seed now, everybody, everybody. Sow that seed now. Sow that seed now. Sow that seed now. Come on. Sow that seed now. Sow that seed now. Now that you've sown that seed, would you lift your hand and just go forth and say some worship? Come on, worship. Back it up with worship. Back it up with, back it up with worship. Come on, come on. Back it up with worship. Back it up with worship. With a cheerful heart we sow seed. With a grateful heart we sow seed. We are appreciative to God. Everything we have comes from him. And it's from thine own have you given to us to sow back to you.